At the end of Texas Highway 87 is the Port Bolivia Ferry that takes you across the bay to the island of Galveston. It is here where industrial parks and saltwater merge, two opposite worlds colliding, kind of like a Florida boy fish in Texas waters. The salty breeze coming off the gulf was the warm Texas welcome I had been looking for, a precursor to the inshore excursion the next day would bring. I'll be heading out on Galveston Bay with my good buddy Captain Derek York who's been fishing these waters for 20 years. I think it's safe to say that the fish don't have a chance. I'm looking for the unexpected, something I don't see every day, and I'm pretty sure it's out there, hiding under a buoy. The Captain's Log with Captain Jonathan Moss, presented by Florida Fishing Products. Do some fishing. Get you out on Galveston Bay. First time I've ever fished in Texas. Well, I'm you excited. Bait popping. Got a beautiful morning. <clears throat> you know, yep. always. Whenever we talk fishing, as you know, as guides and captains, we're always considering the weather and this whole the whole trip out here. It's rain, 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 rain. Yep. And this Raining morning is absolutely beautiful. So I'm, uh, I'm stoked, man. It's already ready yeah. for the coastas. Beautiful day get underway here and go see if we can find some red and trout start out and uh, maybe go find something special today. Hey, so. you are the man. I'm, I'm excited. excited to go fishing so. with you. It's been a long time coming. We've done the podcast yep. together and uh, talked about doing this for a long time. Let's yep, get after man. it. I'm ready to go. Yes, sir. Let's get after it. Island looks fishy. This point up here, we got yep. a bunch of bait already popping. This yeah. looks real red fishy. Always a lot of red fish around this spot. Usually some trout. We caught some really big speckled trout here too. But you know, I like bringing people over here and looking. You know, you got this rookery right here. So there's a little bit of scenery, a yep. little bit of fishing action, cool. and uh, we'll see what we can get today. We've got a little bit of a northeast wind kind of blowing on the front of this island. Um, so we'll get over here, get the troll motor down, and start. See what we can get. I think I'm gonna start with this uh, DOA shad tail, this cow. You're gonna grab that popping cork? I'm gonna try the popping cork, the DOA shad Are we really in Texas the... if, we're in, uh, if we're not using a popping cork? <laughs> <laughs> we are. I love the we'll popping We'll see what cork, happens. Man. I might pick one up in a minute. All right, let's go get the troll motor down and get started. Cool. Oh, a little one. See what we got. Got a little, little red fish. Little red fish. Right up on that point. Micro red. First fish of the day though. Hey, Look getting it started. Yeah. You know when it's <laughs> as turbid and dirty as this water looks, that he looks pretty clean. Yeah. Pretty. Look at him. Tail lit up blue. All right. See you later, buddy. I knew you were gonna get stuck. Yeah, you nailed right that there. shrimp, man. Right there by that on this point. Water flowing by this, yep. this edge here in this corner. Looking fishy. The Captain's Log with Captain Jonathan Moss, presented by Florida Fishing Products, is brought to you by Florida Fishing Products, Icon Coolers, Denko Flyers, Temple Fork Outfitters, Skinny Water Culture, and Go Castaway Fishing Charters. Water is a different color. You were absolutely correct, man. Yeah. It was a little dirty where we started. We got that 
first redfish. And it's a completely different color up here. A lot greener, a lot clearer. Um, we got all that rain, so just kind of turned that water down south into the bay. A little bit dirty and uh, made the run over here a little bit to the east. And uh, well, I think we're gonna see what we can find over here, man. We might find some, some uh, saltwater crappie. Saltwater crappie. So, triple tail, huh? Yep, so we're just gonna kind of bounce around and look at some of these poles. I wasn't expecting the, coming to Texas to catch a triple tail. Yeah, well it's been, um, it's been a good year for them, so. Well, I ain't complaining, man. I love me some so. triple tail. They're a blast to catch. They're gonna be floating up on the surface? Yeah, they should be. We should be able to see them. They'll either be up on their side or sitting in the shade of these poles, so. Cool. It's good now, sun's got up a little bit, so it's a little bit easier to see them. Yep, yep, there's one right here in this corner. See them on the back side. This buoy. Let me grab a rod. All right, they didn't want that plastic. Let's throw a live bait at them. See if they come up and eat a live shrimp. There's one under it. Yep. I'm just leave it. Got him. Got him. Look at that, brother! Triple tail! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Woo. Yes, sir. Nice one too. Made that switch. That just they they're not floating high. They're just sitting kind of right below these buoys. Put that live shrimp on there. A little split shot weight. Made that livey sink down. And boom, triple tail on. That didn't take long at all. Nice fish. All right, brother, here he comes. In the net. In the net. Yes, net. sir! Woo! <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Look at that, man. Man, look at this guy. Yes, sir. Look at that, dude. We got it. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Yes, sir, bro. First Texas triple tail. Pretty nice I fish. Tell you what, I did not expect to go and catch a triple tail. Dude, and there was literally like probably four or five of them that came up with this yep, one yep. when he ate. He came up and followed it. And he, he didn't even get sideways. He just came up from just sitting a little bit deeper below that yeah. pole and came up and munched it. Texas triple tail. All right, let's let this guy go. All right, I got another shrimp. Derek, why don't you uh, grab one and come up here and join me? All right. I know there's a few more sitting there. Got baited up. That's the zone right there. Oh, I just yep, saw They're already fish. on it. Yep, he's got him. Get him. Yep, fish on. Tight, baby. Fish on. Tight, baby. Let's see if there I can get double up it. with you. <laughs> the triple tail dance. That's a nice one, too. Oh, yeah. Real nice fish. Look at that guy. I'll come help you. I was going to see if I could double up, but I'm going to come help you. Oh, yeah. Heck yeah, bro. These things, man, they're like, they just turn on their sides. They've got so much pressure they can put on you. Well, it's because they got three tails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're cheating. Nice fish. All right, here he comes. All right. Oh, he Ooh. saw the net. No, sir. <laughs> Come here, buddy. He did the Texas two step up. on you. Yep. God, there we the go. Net. My man! Yeah! <laughs> Sweet! Triple tail action. That's Gallus a nice one too, man. Look at that head on that thing. Yes, sir. Well done, dude. Beautiful fish, man. It's like one of my favorite ones to catch. Look at this, man. You look like you got attacked a little bit back here, maybe. Something popped in. Got a little battle scar. Yeah. And now, the Conservation Challenge with Captain Jonathan Moss. I love going fishing, I love catching fish, I love releasing fish, but it's important that when we release fish that we do so properly. See, there's a thing called cryptic mortality, which simply means a fish, after it's been released, dies because it was improperly handled and improperly caught and released. Here's the biggest thing for that, the biggest factor that causes cryptic mortality, and that's the vertical hanging of fish. What I mean by that is when you grab that fish by its jaw, either with your hand or a pair of bogus, and it's hanging vertically. Think about gravity is now pulling on that fish, but when it's in the water, 
that belly of that fish, that body, its internal organs are being supported. When it's out of the water, if it's vertical, it's being grabbed by gravity that its internal organs can tear. You might not see it, you might not see the bleeding, but it can hurt the fish. So it's crucial that we are properly holding our fish when we plan to release them. This applies for our redfish, our speckled sea trout, our snook, and our black drum, our four big inshore species. Our fifth would be tarpon. Tarpon are a different breed, and what I mean by that is in the state of Florida, if the tarpon is over 40 inches or 40 pounds, you have to leave it in the water. If, you, if it's less than that, of course, you can bring it into the boat, but again, properly hold on to it. If you want to learn more, visit our website, captainslogtv.com education to learn more about cryptic mortality. Oh man, look at that cast. Moved up here. Oh. No, I was, my mom was swimming the, around the pole. On the pole the there? was swimming around the pole. Yeah. Yeah. Pulled up this next one, man. Seen a couple as soon as we got up here. You're oh. going, you're on. Oh yeah. That's a good one. Oh yeah, nice one. He's a little lighter in color. Yeah, look how white this thing is. <laughs> There's another one up on the pole. Man. Unbelievable fishing. I'm bit. I'm on. All I'm right. On. Double, yeah. baby. Woo. Oh, there's, he, oh, there's another one. He jumped and the other one's with him. He's still Holy following cow. it. He's still following it. Look at him. He's trying to eat the cork. <laughs> <laughs> He's still there. <laughs> there's one right yeah. behind Here, take it. this rod. Take this rod. Let's do something crazy. Where's that DOA shrimp? Holy cow, look at this. Oh my gosh, look, look at this triple tail are all over the place. <laughs> Where'd he go? Where'd he go? He's right here, right here in front of me. Oh, that's nuts. He swam <laughs> off. <laughs> I thought we could triple up. That would be crazy. Give me one. <laughs> that was absolutely insanity, bro. <laughs> look at that. That was crazy. Texas triple tail rodeo today, brother. Yeah. All right, I got the net. All right. One. Oh! Did you see that? Did you oh, see cool. that? <laughs> it through the hook. Right it through the, the hook. It right went in the net. <laughs> that was so cool. <laughs> oh, double <laughs> triple action right there, bro. Sweet. Him to you. There's mine. Look at this, man. They're not monsters, but man, they sure are fun to They're catch. A whole lot of fun. I mean, just and having that third one oh, yeah. hitting the popping cord. I can't believe. You better watch this one. You may pull it in the water back <laughs> you know, here. I, I was like, man, I'm gonna give you my rod. I'm gonna see if I can stick one because he was floating high. He was chasing it. Yeah. But by the time I came back up with that plastic, he was already swam down. Yes, man. Super cool. Such a cool <laughs> fish. Well. That is what we came for, brother. Yeah. You gave me a call and you said, dude, we got some we got some triple tail. I know, man. Maybe. It's like you never want to say jinx it, you know, but man, they're on fire up here. Heck so yeah. Heck pretty yeah. cool, man. Doesn't happen every year either. No. We don't get a lot of these all the time. Triple so. tail action, Galveston, Texas. That's what dreams are made of, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. You gonna get them back in the water? Yeah, let's get them back in. Ready, buddy? Yep. Look at this. See you. Gone. Love it when they just swim right out of your hand. Heck yeah, man. Yes, sir, dude. Awesome. <laughs> it, you can't beat that, can't man. Can't beat that, dude. Oh, man. All right. I thought, well, I thought the third one was going to jump in the boat. You know, I, I was not expecting him to come up and smash that cork like that. Yeah. He wanted it. Well, the cool thing is, man, these TFO rods just yanking them right off the poles. Yep. Nice and so, easy. Because they're Light definitely, they're definitely but, trying to wrap you back up in there. You know, oh, they the want to eat it. They're definitely swimming back in that structure. Mm -hmm. They want to get you broken off real quick. And now, the Tackle Locks Tip with Captain Jonathan Loss, presented by Icon Coolers. Two knots that every angler needs to know. Two knots that I use every day, whether I'm offshore, I'm inshore, or I'm bass fishing. And that's the uni to uni and the clinch knot. Now, I use the uni to uni knot to connect my main line, my braided line, to my fluorocarbon leader. In this case, 30 pound Ford Fishing Products Infinity Fluoro. This is gonna be an inshore rig. Let me show you how to do that real quick. We're gonna wrap and create a loop with 
that braid line and that leader. I'm gonna wrap that leader around the braid five times. Pull it tight, bring that together, cinch it down. You'll see that the, the, the wraps will lay over each other. You can do that same exact thing, take that braid line, create that loop around your fluoro. And again, I'm gonna wrap it five or six times. I'll go further, a few more wraps, depending on the thickness of the braid in comparison to the leader. Get that wrapped around, pull it tight. Now, pull the two together. I like to lick the line to lessen the friction, and you're good to go. Cut off the ends, got my pliers here. Clean that up. That connection will slide through your guides, nice and easy. It's a quick, easy knot to tie, and it's strong. Now, from your leader line, fluoro, to your hook. This is the clinch knot. Stick that tag in through the eye of the hook and I like to pinch it. Now you can wrap it five times. Bring it through, pull it tight. You know you did it right when it's sticking out a 90 degree angle. Trim off the excess and you are good to go. Two knots, the uni to uni and the clinch knot. Two knots that every angler needs to use, whether you're bass fishing, you're inshore saltwater fishing, or you're offshore fishing. Learn these knots, learn them at home, practice at home, and you'll be able to master this so you can get it done when you're in the water really fast so you won't waste any time fishing. Derek, where are we at, dude? We, we went from fishing triple tail and buoys to this giant sunken ship. Yeah, we ran back down here to Galveston. We're at the what everybody calls the concrete ship. Okay. So, I mean, this thing's been here since World War II, basically. It was scuttled here. And uh, just, you know, it's, it's basically washed up in about five feet of water on the backside, and we're sitting at about 30, 30 feet or so here. And these fish just like to hang out on this deep channel ledge. And you got a bunch of bull reds here? And uh, yeah, a lot of bull reds. Get some big black drum as well. And cool. uh, you know, we caught some uh, mangroves and stuff off of it before. But you never know what you're going to catch here, man. So the tide is ripping. Yeah, it is. So they should be feeding. And uh, we'll see what we can get. Derek, what's going on with this warship, man? That's so, pretty cool that they're towing it and yeah. moving it. Today of all days, um, they're moving Battleship Texas from up in Houston. It's been moored up there for many, many years um, down here to Galveston to try to get the hole repaired. Um, it's been leaking a whole lot of water. And, and uh, so, you know, it's a historical landmark for Texas, yeah. you know, and uh, really cool to get to see that happen today. Oh, here. yeah. Of all the days to be yeah. out in the water fishing. The boat hasn't moved in, I don't know, 50, 60 years. And we're here today <laughs> watching it go by the boat. So. Uh, I think we're pretty good. I Coast got a Guard, bunch of tugs pulling it. Yeah, Coast Guard's got it all blocked off, so we can't get close to it. But uh, pretty cool, man, to see that happen. Yeah. Fish on, get him, man. Nick. Get him, yeah. dude. Fish on, baby. This is a good one right here. It's the one we're looking for, my Just friend. Just rebaited. Is it on the live croaker? Yep, on the live bait. Damn, this is the track. Feels like a red fish. We'll see. It's not a hard head. <laughs> There's the leader. There's a oh, red yeah, fish. Oh yeah, nice red. Not a monster, but a good one. Where's that net? In there. In here? Yep. Yeah. Nice work, Heck yeah, dude. dude. Heck yeah. yeah. <laughs> Multi spots, both sides. Look at there, that one in the back is like a yep. donut. Texas redfish. Yes, sir. Love it. Circle hook. Perfect. First corner of the mouth. Heck yeah, yeah, man. Yes, sir. Man. I mean, we've done everything we went out to do today. Yes, sir. So this is pretty awesome. Let's get this one back in. I'm sure she's gonna need a little bit of reviving. There she goes, she's feeling good. There you go, she got him kicked in my face, man. 
What a great day. Great way to Fine book end it. Water. You starting with the, with the red, bunch of yep. triple tail in the middle, and with the nice red, a little upgrade. Yep, man, it was great awesome, Great way man. to cap off a great day, little, brother. Got a little windy here at the end, but uh, we had fun and uh, caught a lot of good fish. And uh, man, I had a great time fishing great with you, time. Jonathan. Thanks for coming over. Well, listen, the day's not over. We're gonna meet some friends tonight for some Mexican yeah. food and get cleaned up a little uh, bit. Yep. All right, bro, let's get out of here. All right, sounds good, man. Glenn Campbell saying, Galveston, oh Galveston, I still hear your sea winds blowing. As I reminisce over today's fishing trip, these lyrics accompany scenes of Triple Tail racing out from under the buoys after my rigged live shrimp. Those aggressive predators were exactly the something unexpected I was looking for. Their unique markings and skin patterns provide them the perfect camouflage to fool unsuspecting bait or an eager angler. Thankfully, fishing with an experienced local made all the difference when it came to finding these clever fish. And ending our day catching redfish with the battleship Texas floating across the bay was a Texas-sized reminder of how blessed we are to have the freedom and opportunity to enjoy days like this.